Hey, it's Dave here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about another reason why this mysterious condition called irritable bowel syndrome uh, can manifest itself in your digestive system. This particular video is all about what I call bad bugs. So these are microorganisms in the digestive system that can either create infections or what we call dysbiosis, which is just an imbalance in the different types of microbes within the digestive system. So this is one of the most common reasons for digestive symptoms. It's one of the reasons why I had a bunch of digestive symptoms, the main reason, in fact, that I had digestive symptoms. And I would say in at least 50% of the people we've worked with over the last uh, decade or so, the bad bugs have been the main reason why people have been feeling unwell. But we have to ask um, initially, before we talk about all of these bad bugs, why they're there in the first place. Because you don't just have bad bugs in the digestive system for no reason. You don't have imbalances in the microbiome without a good reason for that. And um, while that's a little bit beyond the scope of this particular video, we will discuss it in uh, another video. Uh, but really it's about your diet, your stress levels, whether you've had an acute infection like food poisoning, the level of function in your immune system, the function of your liver and gallbladder, and, and in keeping the digestive environment optimal and maintaining a really strong, balanced microbiome. And if you don't eat well, if you're stressed out and you're not living a, a healthy lifestyle, then these microbes can fall out of balance. And once they do, they can start to cause all kinds of different problems in your digestive system. So we really do need to understand why those microbes are there. Um, and we'll come back to that just before the end of the video. So just as a, a quick overview, in some studies, it's been shown that 60% or even more of the people who have IBS actually have a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. And this is where you get a ton of bacteria um, overgrowing in much higher numbers in the small intestine. The small intestine is supposed to have lots of microbes in it, but not the same level as the large intestine. The large intestine is like just a veritable mass of microbes. The small intestine is also supposed to have a ton of microbes in there, but nowhere near as many as the large intestine. And so theoretically what happens is those large intestinal microbes migrate upwards or backwards up into the small intestine and start causing problems. There might be other reasons why small intestinal bacterial overgrowth develops, such as low levels of digestive enzymes, low stomach acid levels, uh, poor bile secretion into the digestive system. All of these things as well can change the environment and allow those microbes to overgrow. So SIBO is a huge one. Now you can also have something called LIBO, and that just means large intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You can have things in the large intestine that cause problems as well. The next category is something called SIFO, S-I-F-O. That's small intestinal fungal overgrowth. So that's where you get things like candida and other types of yeast and fungal organisms overgrowing in the small intestine. And they can cause exactly the same symptoms as SIBO. Their symptoms that they cause are almost indistinguishable. And sometimes you can have both. You can have both SIBO and SIFO. And again, you can also have these um, fungal overgrowths uh, happening in the large intestine as well. Parasites is the next category. There are tons of different types of parasites that you can have overgrown in the system. I don't think that all of them are necessarily problematic, but they can become problematic if your system gets run down. So again, it's not necessarily the presence of the parasites themselves, it's the way that your immune system is interacting with those parasites that causes the problem. And sometimes the harmless bugs can, can become more nasty and more virulent and cause more problems because of what's going on in your body and your system. And that's a really important point to remember. So with the parasites, we have truly pathogenic parasites that the medical system recognizes. We have things like Giardia, Lamblia, Cryptosporidium, Entamoeba histolytica. But there are also some sort of parasites that sit in the gray area where we know they seem to cause problems for some people, but they don't seem to cause problems for everybody. And they are things like Blastocystis hominis, uh, Entamoeba coli, Dientamoeba fragilis, and things like that. And then finally, we also have H. pylori. And H. pylori predominantly lives in the stomach, but it can really mess up the balance of the microbiome 
further down. So the studies actually show this. They show that when you have H. pylori, it can change the microbiome like a domino effect, if you like, from the stomach downwards through the intestine. And they've also shown that the microbiome changes back and normalizes when you get rid of H. pylori as well. And it may well be that it's the result of either the immune response to H. pylori or something to do with the level of stomach acid, which then has a domino effect on, on the rest of the digestive system as well. Because we know H. pylori can either increase or decrease stomach acid depending on where it lives in the stomach. So all of these bugs can cause problems. Less frequently, we can also sometimes have viruses. Uh, this is not quite as clear cut. There's something called the virome, um, which is a part of the overall microbi uh, microbiome. And sometimes viruses like um, rotavirus and norovirus, possibly things like Epstein-Barr virus as well, may contribute to chronic digestive symptoms in the same way that all of these other microbes do as well. And so you can test for all this. You don't even have to leave your home to test for all this. And sometimes you might have to take charge of the situation and run your own testing because the medical system still doesn't really recognize that irritable bowel syndrome can result from all of these factors, right? They're still not cottoned on to that idea. Of course, some functional doctors, integrative doctors, uh, know damn well that these things can cause irritable bowel syndrome or very similar symptoms. But in the general medical system, for example, the NHS here in the UK, you're not going to get much acknowledgement from the medical system that all of this stuff contributes to the symptoms. So you sometimes have to take this into your own hands. You can run stool testing to figure out what's going on. You can run breath testing at home to figure out whether you have SIBO. Um, you can run H. pylori testing. You even get the viruses um, on some of the stool tests as well. So there's no excuse. If you have irritable bowel syndrome and, and you've had it for a while and nobody's helping, you can investigate all of this, which is kind of cool. Now, we go back to why are the bad bugs there? And we mentioned that it's usually changes in your body that allow the bad bugs to get in and take a foothold. And that's a really important consideration. It's a very important consideration for treatment as well, because if you just focus on the bad bugs and you don't focus on the things that are going wrong in your body, your immune system, your general microbiome, your diet, your stress levels, etc. If you don't deal with those things, you can take supplements or antibiotics or uh, prescription antifungal medicines to get rid of all of this stuff, and you might feel well for a while, but if you haven't dealt with the reasons why the bugs were there in the first place, they often come back and cause the same problems and sometimes even more severe problems as well. So we've got to acknowledge that the bad bugs can be part of the jigsaw puzzle of irritable bowel syndrome, but we've also got to acknowledge that they don't appear and cause problems without unjust cause. There's usually something underpinning these bad bugs getting in in the first place, and we need to deal with those underlying factors as well as getting rid of the bad bugs. So in other videos in the series, we're going to discuss this in more detail. I hope this has been helpful, and I will catch up with you soon. Thank you.